So what is the Tiger Cat Blitz? You know, I have to assume it came from Canada, right? Is it Hamilton is the Tiger Cats? I just assumed um, that wherever you were at when you named it. I didn't name it. I just uh, renamed it. This is this so. is the I got two things defensively from Bill Mountjoy. Um, most of what I got from Bill Mountjoy is offensive. Number one was Bill Mountjoy. I did not get how to run cover one, but Bill, Bill Mountjoy was insistent that we run cover one in seven on seven. Now, Bill cared more about winning seven on seven than I did. Personally, I couldn't care less. But we did it, and it was so good. We won like 22 straight games, and this was not a high-level football team. This was a five-and-five five team. Um that we decided, okay, we'll run cover one and cover three. And then we ended up specializing in cover one. And then we really nailed down how to run cover one over the course of that. We luckily had a few opponents who taught us the mistakes we were making and we learned from them, we paid attention, um, didn't just yell at the kids. Uh, appreciated those opponents teaching us those things, uh, especially ones that taught us in scrimmages and not live games. Um, the other thing I got from him was the Tiger Cat Blitz, which I believe he got from the University of Florida in the 90s. Um, maybe Spurrier era, whoever was defensive coordinator in the, in the mid-90s. Um, and the Tiger Cat Blitz is essentially, a, a it is a zero pressure, um, cover zero pressure, no no safety in the middle of the field, straight man. Anybody who is in a position to run vertical, meaning that they are not in the backfield, is locked up in man coverage. Anybody who is in the backfield is not getting out. That is the that is the base concept. Um, it has it is known. Um, a lot of coaches, and I say this because we did it wrong the first four weeks. We probably did it wrong for about six weeks until we learned. First four weeks we ran it, we ran it against teams that weren't as good as us. And we called it, we brought everybody, pin their ears back and go. And what we learned in the fifth game against a team that was as good as us was – which Bill had told us, and we kind of, you know, it was one of those things I glazed over, uh, you know, okay. And then I had to go back and teach it. And I think he gave me the video on it inside at the time. And I don't have it anymore. Um, and I learned it and then that's, I moved from there. Um, the, um, the mistake that we made was ever, it was pin your ears back and go. So if you weren't in coverage on somebody, you were blitzing all out which is great, but it means somebody's band is going to play every time you call it. Either we're going to get a sack, a tackle for a loss, a big play, or they're going to score. Because if everybody blitzes, who's not turning their back and cover zero, man coverage, then there's no second-level defender. There's certainly no third-level defender, but there's not even a second-level defender. Um, so we had to adapt from that. It is not an all-out blitz. Um, I've seen some different things that were related to this. Um, there were, there were the same concept and what it does is it adapts to any formation with a simple set of rules that tells, okay, this guy always has number one corners have number one man coverage. Um, the, and we're going to focus on the four, two, five. The uh, free safety, who if you're cover one, cover three, is the middle of the field safety. And the weak safety always have number two. And the strong safety has number three because you call the strength to the trips. If there's not trips, you are always getting the strong safety coming to, you know, so any sort of strong side toss outside zone, the strong safety is is coming into the face of that. Um, and you play inside leverage man coverage. 
and um and then we have a series of rules that we'll get into later on the uh, well we can't get all the way into them but um it adapts to everything so unlike even even if i called a smoke strong which is blitzing the strong safety out of a base i call it over smoke strong zero even if i called that i have to check that to trips never have to check tiger tiger we run tiger tiger it never gets checked it never changes it's all built in i kind of like what dominique frank's talked about on the show with nfl coverages what do they call they call one right they just yell it out loud <laughs> they say one but then there's ten thousand adjustments in there it's a it's it, it's actually very much like the kinds of things that I like to do like like you know that's that that would be my thing is like every possible situation is covered within the call one um and they're able to get deeper and deeper and deeper with game plan and stuff but um it's kind of like that what's the call tiger how does you know what if they run this that's fine it's tiger what do they run this it's fine it's tiger it's our base empty check I've run it against 32 personnel. I mean, it it adjusts to all of them. So um, that's that's what it is, is the ability to bring – it gives you the ability to bring six, seven, or eight to always outnumber the blockers that they have. I mean, if you go and do this math, it's always going to outnumber the blockers that they have. So if you bring – if you go two by two, let's say, Sorry, if you go uh, empty, five receivers out. I cover those five, and then I have six on your five linemen. If I go, if you go um, doubles, two by two, 10 personnel. I cover those with four. I have seven left that are focused on the box. Uh, if you go, you know, pro formation, I bring eight on your seven and I have your three receivers that are in position uh, covered man. Um, so no matter what, I'm going to have a numbers advantage. Uh, and then the, the, that's what it is. Uh, the big thing to understand is it is not an all out blitz. And I started talking about that and then we got, it is not an all out blitz. All you have done is you have told whoever is not in man coverage, you have, so talking about linebackers and safeties, if you're not, if you don't have a man, so let's say the strong safety doesn't have a number three receiver. If you don't have a man, you have no pass responsibility. Your job is nothing gets out of the backfield. Now, technically, he can have – so, like, if you flare a running back, then whoever the edge rusher is has to has to break off with that running back. But more and more, I think, if – you know, blitz peel is hard for a high school kid. Blitzing, oh, there goes shiny object. Let me chase shiny object. Now I'm turned and he's out leveraged me. If I play it as if I'm five by five, force defender, but – I have no flat responsibility. So, okay, I don't have to play it five by five. I can play it a little tighter. But on the snap, I key read like always. Well, then he's running to me and I just pick him up. Pass, boom, I got him. Or pass, all right. I see pass, it's, it's a delay blitz. If I, see, if I see run, I play force. If I'm a linebacker, if he pulls follow, if he doesn't fill, if I get a pass read, it becomes a blitz. So essentially the linebacker's read now becomes it truly if he pulls follow if he doesn't fill and fill becomes blitz. That's it. I, I installed today and that's exactly how I worded it. If he pulls that's, follow, if he doesn't blitz, because that's right. a that's a fill. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the only thing that they have to know in that is if the backer, if the if the running back tries to release, tackle him. Right. If he tries to run through A gap, B gap to get into a hook route, tackle him. Because he can't get out. Um, I've never had anything called on that. 
that guy that dude's running through a blitzer like i'm blitzing b gap he's blitzing he's trying to go through a b gap we're gonna we're gonna fight yeah um and the the outside guys it's a delay where okay ball down and force ball up i'm blitzing you know that's that's basically it um so that that uh it simplifies the game for them and then also as you know when we run cover one the most popular question on jdfb is how do you force from cover one it's in the archive it's in the in the coach simple search there you search cover one it'll it'll be there search force it'll be there you search very simple term don't try to don't 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 try to treat our search engine like google if you want to know about a force defender in the 3-4 defense uh adjusting to cover one and defending you know uh a, a wing tee type force in <laughs> there's only 1500 different posts we'll narrow it down to the 20 that are about force and then you can just kind of scroll through those and find the one you want there won't be 1 billion research results like google uh the algorithm isn't that specific and there's a, uh, that is one of the first questions you're going to have too. I can, I can tell you that because this, like Joe said, I've been to four different places where I have to be the install forefront, three front. It's always, I have one guy coming off the edge. He's blitz peel back comes to him. Where's my force player? Yes, exactly. It is going to it's be a cover zero. Whoever you put on the number two wide receiver or whatever it is to that side, right? That, 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 that's who it is. You're right. It's cover zero. If it was empty, who would be your force guy? And then if you can think about it like that, as you go into that install, you'll be okay. If you go into it thinking, I always want to have two or three backs in the backfield so I can, it's an all out blitz. Um, then it's, if that guy so has to blitz peel, then You don't need force. You need pass rush contain. Right. So, yeah, that's the thing that you have to understand. Cover zero is not a base coverage. I know some guys get away with it. Cover zero is not a base coverage. So when you apply the basic rules of football, of which only about 50%, maybe 40%, maybe 20% of coaches actually know this, um, and I would argue that it's probably, I wouldn't say that everyone uh, who's in the top, you know, we talk about the above average coaches. I wouldn't say everyone in the top above average coaches, defensive coaches understands run fits truly. Um, and there's more than one way to do run fits, but you have to have a system of run fits. Yeah. Um, I would say that the vast majority of coaches don't understand run fits uh, or they think they do, but they change them every week, which is not a system of run fits. Um you look at guys who run funnel run fits. You look at guys who run umbrella run fits. However you do it, box it doesn't change. It can't change. It does not. That's not a system. Zero cannot fit the content the 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 basic rules of run fits because you have three, four, five guys with their backs turned. Well, we need nine to fit the run. Two can have their backs turned. Those are called corners or deep half safeties if you're in cover two. Well, only two, because we need nine because of the number of gaps that there are. We've got seven gaps and two forces. Double wing changes it. Double wing, you have to be two-gapped because there's ten gaps. Most of the time, we have nine gaps. Seven interior, assuming two tight ends, you have seven interior gaps and two, two uh, four spots. Um, you cannot fit all of that with the with the basic rules of run fits so this is a system that has that is aggressive it is an aggressive call because it, it even though we're not blitzing everybody they will eventually be blitzing and i've committed six uh i've committed anywhere from six to eight guys to the run right i've said you don't have pass coverage um so now I've taken a safety, which is where we started this. I've taken a safety who was out. If I was in cover one, 
is potential player in conflict. I have to defend the run. I have to defend the pass and man coverage. Or even if it was cover three, I have to defend the four. I have to be forced. I have to be flat. So I have to get a read. And I've said, whatever read you get, you're not going backwards. So, you know, we want to go back to the linebacker. The linebacker has no drop. He doesn't have back out of the backfield. He has, if he pulls, follow. If he doesn't, go. Yeah. Run over anybody who's in your way. So what you've done for them, and you've done the same thing for the safety who is in man coverage. Corners are always that way. But you've done the same thing for the safety who's in man coverage. He does. He can play better man coverage now, whether he plays off or press. He has to play inside leverage because he has no free safety help, but he doesn't have to worry about forcing. So he's going to be better in his man coverage than when his attention is split. And so everybody's job has gotten simpler. But, yeah, it's not perfect. It's If it was, we'd all just run it every snap. Right. Um, so that brings the next question is why do you install it? So where, what's the use here? So you, you mentioned a little bit right there. If you just have more gaps than your basic run fits can fill, is that a uh, legitimate reason to install the? No, I wouldn't base it on that. I wouldn't base it on the gaps. I, I would base it on I want a – it's first of all, I think a lot of coaches think it's a pass blitz and they just send everybody. Understand, we have told eight guys to defend the run. This is a run. Most cover zeros are dangerous. It goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Most cover zeros are high risk against the run because you pop the first level, there's no second level. Right. This is, when coached properly, relatively low risk against the run because I have eight guys, four of whom are second level in the 425, who are all defending the run. It should be a better run defense. It works against everything. The, the basic rules adjust to everything. We have rules in there, and and we can't go over all the rules and everything, and it God, please do not go and and draw this up. And I could probably put something up on YouTube. I'll I'll, I'll pull something up for YouTube. But um, you don't want to install a blitz based off of a podcast, please. You need to learn. You need to learn it. Um, but you can. I mean, you can you can get on your Google searches and stuff too. I'm not the only one who has it. Um. You have a blitz that has eight man, eight guys committed to the run that adapts to everything. Like I said, it's our empty check. My my, you know, as a defensive coordinator, it's always been my base empty check. Um, so you have that. You have um, the ability to have a relatively. It is an aggressive call because again, I'm committing eight guys to one thing and four guys to something. So as far as our play calling mentality, it's an aggressive call that adapts to everything. Um, it has built in, so I started to get into, it has built in ways to defend the draw. It has built in ways to defend screens. Um, it does not go away from any of our, unlike most cover zero blitzes, it does not go away from a lot of our base teachings. Like we said, the linebacker key reads are the same. I just don't have to worry about pass dropping. The overhang safety key reads are the same. I just don't have to worry about pass dropping unless I get a, a flare from a back or a shoot route from, a, from, a, from an H back or something like that. Um, so if you want an aggressive call, most of, so, um, in in the four two five defense system and in all of our defensive systems, we talk about one to three exotic blitzes in a game plan, right? Which can feel a little limiting, I'm sure, to some coaches who are used to having six hundred. Uh, but I promise you, you won't regret it. And you can still base blitzes are fine. You know, with bullet strong, bullets weak, smoke strong, smoke weak, fine. Even a, even a bullet strong X, you know, you can do those things. Um, you can run your defensive line to us. You have a you have plenty of calls if you build this thing out uh, over time, but um, it gives you an aggressive call that doesn't count against your one to three because you're going to work this every single week, um, and you're going to. 
I, I honestly believe if you commit to this, you are going to trust it the same way that you trust your base um, yeah. because it's just that adaptable. And many of your exotics are going to require like, uh, we got to do something else. We got to, you know, we got to check it here. We got to check it there, whatever. Um, it's a base blitz that can give you, you just get a lot of mileage out of it. You really do. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate it because of the fact we don't have to check out because I'm, you know, you finally draw up the nerve to call the, the one and they, give you and they come out and they come out in trips and you're like, roll yep. it. Like, what do we, um, I'll tell you why we installed it and why I think that we needed it is we, uh, I'm in a three, four package this year. Uh, and I know this, we're going to mainly talk about four, two, five tonight, and we'll talk about some adjustments later, but. I needed a way to bring pressure that wasn't cover three. Right. Um, because that's kind of what I've been running everything out of. I've just been, that's been my off coverage. We're read two team. Um, I would love to say we're split field quarters, but we haven't really gotten into it. So we really are just a read two with some cover three for our blitzing. There's, but you're we read, play, you're you're just, yeah, yeah we, we, we played a team or we have to play a team that is a four verts heavy they want to go all the time and so i'm not comfortable my kids oh, don't me, have enough give the, uh give me the rights to share the screen oh of course yeah i don't um i'm not comfortable with my kids it'll let me in a minute maybe i got it okay i don't think i had to do anything that's awesome um i didn't really i don't know that my i've worked with my kids enough i don't feel like i've given enough enough attention on trying to cover four verts and running cover three. So, you know, this was just a, a package that I needed. Um, it also, for me, fills that goal line defense need. Um, depending on formation, right? It, it, it kind of mm -hmm. does, like you said, it adapts to everything. So that's, that's kind of why I went with it. I love this, uh, the system you're using here. It's wonderful. Playmaker. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating to me how nobody has figured this crap out. It really is awesome. It's like this just works. Maybe they should sponsor us. Just give. Uh, me, I wouldn't bet on it. Um, give me the product, and then we'll, we'll say your name twenty times. I mean, I would love for them to sponsor me. As, as far as I know, it's the same guy who made the. It's one guy who made this program in nineteen ninety three or 94 so this ran on windows 3.1 for those of you who can't see it it'll be on youtube and on tuesday um this is the same program that ran on windows 3.1 right and and it's it's i have the mac version as well which is this is still this is still the 2008 version um i have the mac version and i know there's some that's newer and i'm sure there's some updated versions but honestly i don't need the updates like i can just draw stuff up so fast in this um, and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a great program. I mean, it's, it's just a simple program. I've made some great looking playbooks. I don't use, I don't, I, the only thing I use huddle for is to share with our kids. I want to share, you know, to share a playbook with our kids. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't draw a personal playbook up. Um, I would draw a personal playbook up in playmaker all day long. Although, might hire someone to to do the busy the the Microsoft uh, Visio course for me. I got some I got some thought process on that. I was introduced to that this year actually when I was a job searching, and man, is it wonderful! It's beautiful. <clears throat> I just, just don't want to do it. It's beautiful. It's just expensive. Mm -hmm. Um. So going back to why, so four vert team. If your if your package doesn't fit well with that, whatever you're doing, um, I mean, because you know, we still we have. You know, it's a read two team. If they go three by one, um, I've got an outside linebacker trying to cover somebody who think they think is a a, a slot receiver. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's more reasons to have a, a good blitz like this. Or, I don't know if you really call it a blitz. It is a blitz, but it's not an all out blitz. It's yeah. I mean, it's you've got to. It's hard to teach your kids this too. Um, uh that 
you know, hey, you don't have pass, but it's not a blitz blitz. And you'll probably have to get toasted on it once or twice to have the uh, the film that you need to say, see what I meant. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's <laughs> you know, we need that teaching time. And, and you probably don't nail it the first time. Right. Um, so, and I'm just drawing it up here for anybody that really wants to see it. Uh, it'll be in the YouTube stuff. Um, the, it's not a blitz and that's the hard thing to, to teach is you still have reads. You just don't have as much in your assignment. Um, you, you don't have to drop to the pass zone. Those guys are all covered. Uh, that's that's the key to it. It is a wonderfully elementary system to have so many uses. And when you can install something for cheap and get a lot of mileage out of it. Uh, that's I've definitely... had games where it was 50, 60% of our play calls, quite yes. honest. I mean, uh, legitimately had nothing there um, that, you know, had no... no um, fancy calls installed or anything like that. And we just ran this, we ran this. And it, again, it breaks down. I mean, there's the, like, you, you can sit there and draw it up and go, well, uh, as what I have on the screen here, um, this sucks against power, right? If they ran, or let's say, let's say, um, so what I have is a two by two and, um, let's say that they ran a GT counter because my end has to be the contain because in two by two, the weak safety is walked out. The end is now probably going to get kicked out. So let's say that they run a GT, a Q counter, QGT counter where the guard uh, and tackle pull and kick out on the weak yeah. side. And where the R, the, the running back is going to go and fill uh, for where he's left. And, uh, you know, he'll he'll handle that backside end. And, you know, the center's going to block back and da 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 And uh, that's probably not a great play call. It Because, not because it's atrocious, but because somebody's got to beat a block. You know, and my, my mic can still scrape and give me some numbers advantage there. But right. not numbers advantage, but... Because my mic would not be blitzing as you see, as you may see if you are watching this. Remember, he is reading. He would still read and pull. With so he, he would, would get the pull, but somebody's got to beat a block, right? Because of this, this look, somebody's got to beat a block. Um, I don't mind that. There's a lot of dudes. I have a better chance of beating a block because nobody's playing pass, right? We're all playing run. So we can be a little more aggressive, but in theory, that's not great. It's not perfect. However, this is not my base defense. There's a risk reward when I call a zero coverage blitz or a zero coverage call period. Um, so, you know, you, you, you accept those things and you deal with it. Um, but as far as a call that you can call 30% of snaps and your kids are going to know it because you're calling it every game. You can use it against every offense. Now, the only place I wouldn't use it is double wing. Um, and I don't love it against 32 personnel because now the free safety basically goes back to the middle of the field. Uh, and he can play the alley if he's really good and sure up some of the things for you. But, you know, there's really heavy offenses. I may not like it as much. But I'm also, you know what, I'm not going to be in. If you're, if you're a dead T, I'm probably not in my base defense anyway. Right. <laughs> right. I'm probably in goal line. Of some sort. Because you only have two guys that can go vertical. So it doesn't make sense. I probably should be in a goal line front. So I kind of see this as a um, – now that I've, I've gained a little bit of experience calling defensive plays, that first year you often don't know where to call plays, like where to mm -hmm. call a blitz. You don't know what the weaknesses and advantages are. You're probably just blitzing because – you watched a video and said, here's how the blitzes work. Even if you buy Joe's stuff and you don't have time to go through it all because you're going to buy it without a doubt in like July or August. 
and you're going to just get the base stuff and you're going to try to install it. Um, my point Which here being great. do that in the first year. Don't feel bad about that. Just right. run the base stuff. Um, as you, you, you will call blitzes regardless and you probably didn't need to. Um, but this gives you a place where you don't have to worry about the weaknesses. Yeah. You won't always have the advantage either probably, yep. but because you're not scheming up their pass protection, right? You're not sending a blitz where their back is yep. supposed to fill and he hates blocking. You're not going to do point. that. Um, but you are going to send people. You're going to test the limits of their offensive line coach. How well does he have them prepared for any blitz um, and just picking up pressure? But you're also going to cover your tail on the back end. The idea here to me and how I taught my kids is like you only have to cover realistically for like three seconds. I don't need you guarding a fade ball, an accurate fade ball down the sideline for 30 yards, right? Like if he doesn't have it out in two and a half seconds, he better be getting hit. I, I tell him, I tell him two seconds, but it's probably about two and a half. Um, we aren't home in that time that we shouldn't be calling this. Right. So it gives you a blitz that you can call comfortably. You don't have to worry about the disadvantage. You can learn the advantages and call other blitzes later and, and learn how to cover your own butt that way. Um, the four verts package doesn't get you like it, it kind of just takes. We, we talked many, many moons ago, which I've been on the podcast for many moons now. It's great. Um, about um, having to play in your base because you don't know what to do. Not that that's wrong either. But you just get to a point where like, I, I don't know. I, they've got me figured out. Whatever my original play calls were, I'm, I'm exposed. I, I don't know. But this gives you an aggressive way to go, you know what? It's kind of the remember the Titan speech. You blitz all night. You know what I mean? You don't give up another yard. You get to, you can do that here. You can be aggressive. You can cover everything. You can adapt to whatever they're throwing at you when they're the uh, offenses of the future and they want to have 250 formations to run three plays. You can cover your own tail there, right? Um, yep. So it, it has a lot of, to me, it's the install is brilliant and it is very cheap and you do get a lot of miles and it doesn't matter how experienced you are. You Great can run it as goes. year one, day one. You're good. Install it, run it. If you're year, I don't know how many long people coach. My head coach has been there for 40 years this year. So if you're at year 40 and you're like, we just, it's just another tool in the tool belt. Masochist then, mostly coach 40 years. The rest of done earlier than that. <laughs> um, no, but that's a great point in that when we talk about the three levels of play calling that's in the defensive play caller system coming out this month, um, we all have the base package. And we all have blitzes. And hopefully you are at or will soon reach because you'll be in JDFP premium coaching systems. You will reach a level where most of your blitzes are to stop something, not to just let's bring somebody. Uh, but there are times when you don't know what it's going to be, but you want to be more aggressive. Um, oh, then I should mention level two, which is movement, which is line stunts. Coaches just aren't using enough line stunts. Um, slants, twists. You can run twist skating. I don't know why there's such a like aversion to it. You can run twist skating. You need to know how to coach it. But honestly, you don't have to invest a ton of time because at most areas, high school, even youth, you can align to perform so the guys can get there. And you don't have to be perfect at it because the offensive lines aren't perfect at picking it up because nobody runs it. Right. But you need to coach it the right way. You need to know who the penetrator, who the looper, all that kind of stuff. Um, we teach you that as well in 425 or whatever defensive system you run. We teach you how to do all that. Um, so that's level two. And then there's coverage disguise that goes into level two as well. Level three is the blitzes. This gives you the ability to have an aggressive blitz where it's not to stop strong side power or it's not to attack your pass protection. Like you said, it's to commit eight guys to the run. And if it's not run, rush the pass and or six or seven, however many it is, um, depending on the, what their formation is. And so it's aggressive in that I've given everybody one job, stop the run. I mean, you know, we have all the little, checks in there 
flares. And stuff. By the way, that stuff never happens. I mean, like it does, but it's like if you call this, if you call this fifteen times in a game, there's going to be like one or two snaps where like it back flares, and like hopefully you go with it. Um, it gives you the ability to make an aggressive play call because what's aggressive about it is you're basically assigning everybody to the run slash blitz and everybody else is assigned to by the way aggressive is assigning somebody to cover zero man coverage aggressive means i'm giving you one job we all in football have two or three jobs linemen have five and it's the simplest job on the field squeeze a down block defeat a base block defeat a reach block which is block two and block away it's really just two jobs there and then a third which is pass and a fourth which is screen retrace I'm going to have five jobs. Quality of that is, the good news is that's the only five jobs they should ever have. Ever. Um, and then you just go about refining those five jobs. When we, you know, safety, just as an example in the 425, an overhang safety in a cover three, cover one has two jobs, three jobs. Force, let's say it's cover three. Force, flat, fold. If it's an outside run, I force it. Oh, and counter reverse bootlegs, so four jobs. CBR. Yep. Yep. And flat. Uh, so if it's at me, I'm force. If it's away from me, squat. If it's inside, I squat. And then if it breaks inside, I fold in. And if it's a pass, I go to the flat. I have four jobs. What we've done in this is said, you got two. Two jobs. And really, what those two jobs, really, we can boil those two jobs down to one thing. Nothing gets out of the backfield. So if you see something coming this way, I tell them you could tackle the flare. That guy tries to flare and you just. I thought he had him. the ball. <laughs> yeah. Tackle it. Tackle the ball. I mean, you know, I thought he had the ball. Like, has it ever, has it been called? Not really. Behind the line of scrimmage, tackling that guy? Not really. You know, if he runs at you. <laughs> To get a face mask or a horse collar on tackling cat that doesn't have the ball. Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> I look, I told you we had it, we had a kid years ago. He was a great kid. Um, but he was uh he had some some uh emotional issues. Uh but he was a great kid and he was a good linebacker, and we you know, we kept things very simple for him. Tackle the fullback wherever he goes. And dude, you'd see some we were a four four. He was a well linebacker, and you would see fullbacks on a fake running 20 yards the opposite direction and then getting just decked oh. out of nowhere because his job. But the great thing about his, his, his mental uh, uh, health issues was that he was extremely black and white. Right. The one job. Now, was he going to cover the hook zone? Nope. But we all uh, make adjustments. So it was a three under three deep, right? With, with uh, no fullback. That's all. Awesome. We did a 10 on 10 game. And this was, and by the way, this was back 20 years ago when the fullback was, uh, you know, a major part of the offensive sets. It was I formation. Right. It was wing T. It was, you know, so he was taking out a key. So if he went and tackled the fullback, a lot of times it was an ISO and the gap was filled. Um, and you know, how many times you get flagged for it? None. There you None. go. So um, let's, um, yeah. let's talk about adjusting this to other fronts and, and then we'll start trying to close that around, you know, the two yeah. hour mark. <laughs> so I'm, I made it. You, By the oh, way, I got my chair part. fixed, but every time that I start to lean back, I think I'm going to tip over. So, I, oh, I, the, the like, expensive chair paid off finally. Yeah. I finally, they finally came and fixed it, but I keep leaning back and thinking, I'm like, I went one overboard. So it's the same chair. They just they put just, a new bottom on it. Uh, new uh because it was one of the wheels that broke one of the uh the bottom part that holds the wheels snapped over top of one of the wheels split over top of one of the wheels and they just put a new bottom part on it works great i looked at those chairs and i want a new chair if i file a warranty claim i don't need a new chair i love the chair um i want to talk about hey, my adjustment no, first hey, because i know that you've probably got a bajillion so moving four two five to three four um, and, and it's a situational thing. So we don't flip our, we're freshman ball. 
Yeah, you're. I have more talent on this team than I've ever had on any team I've ever coached at any mm-hmm. level, so it doesn't matter. But um, IQ, everything. They just don't have the experience of reps on Friday night, so yeah. maybe there's something there. You can be a bad we coach and still look good. That's right. We don't flip our. I'm, I'm a bad coach and I do look good. Yeah. We uh, we don't flip our safety. No, you're top twenty percent. Remember. That's right. I'm in Joe Daniel football. Yeah. We don't flip our outside backers. Yep. They just they play one side. Um, and so we know what side is the strong safety side and what side is the free safety side and what side is the Sam side and what side is the wheel side, right? So that's and it's and that's not a problem in the four two, by the way. It only creates a problem in the three four. Right. And so what we've done, we just made a few small adjustments and it we I don't even know if they were necessary, but they were to me because I need to be able to leave people home. And so we wanted to keep our main seven dudes. They never have to move, leave the box. Or if they do, it's because they're covering a route. Um, just to make them more comfortable at home and my safety zone, never have to flip. And so we just went from, instead of calling a weak slant, we call a strong slant. Um, what that allows me to do is my will can come off at any time. Um, but it doesn't matter. Whichever backer, because we're going to slant strong to cover trips, right? Because that trips is still going to be my strong call, and I still need somebody out there filling that gap when that backer is pulled out. And so that's the only adjustment we really made. Um, we're going to test it this this week. Luckily, this will be two or three weeks down the road, and so uh, I will have more numbers than a st- uh, stats on on the defense. But um, trips nub is something we get a lot in this area so that will that will be a test for my mic to uh to fill the edge um and we're just gonna have to see kind of how it works out but that's the adjustment we made i think it's going to be a good one for us i actually look forward to this part of the podcast morning thing because i want to see what other people are doing for adjustments what you've coached them up to do so well we've ad- we've adapted it and again and initially it was a 425 and it does you know work simpler in a four two five and it works just fine in a four three but we have to make different people responsible for different things and in a three three it takes a little bit of work uh and in a three three four is actually easier than three three because remember that our three four system is all of the base foundation from the four two is in place we just kick everybody over a half man right and in our base so in our in our base the sam is listening to the strong safety for an I'm here and I'm gone call. So I should just mention, I'm here and I'm gone call. If the strong safety or the weak safety does not have their receiver. So if there's no number three strong or there's no number two weak, they make an I'm here call, which means you pinch to the end, call it a fire technique. He's slamming the hip and he's trying to squeeze the hip of the tackle down. Um, and essentially, that puts them in a position to spill to the strong safety, weak safety, whoever's whoever's here. He's he's he knows they're there. They have no run responsibility, so I have no concern of them not being there. And what I know is, if I go up the field on a pass rush, that's the cardinal sin in the Tiger Cat. Because if if I'm the defensive end and I have an I'm here call from outside, meaning that if it's a pass, the safety outside of me is coming off the edge. If I go run up the field, that tackle has now blocked two of us. Because I go run up the field and the safety tries to come from from the edge and the edge is just me getting blocked outside. So I have to pin and know that I am I am uh, inside and not go up the field. Um, so for us in, in the base 3-4 that we teach in JDFB, it's very simple. You slant weak and bring the Sam and he listens for the, I'm here, I'm gone call. And the weak side end listens for that. Um, It's, you know, it's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, You could also, by the way, just line your three, four up. Again, this just requires with your strengths and everything. But I mean, honestly, you probably do it, but but you probably do it with yours. You could just line your three, four up in shades. Right. So we've talked about a tight front. And and because that's my issue is that my three D linemen are live. I wouldn't do a tight front because you don't have anybody. Oh, you mean a five like shade outside? I would have a five. I would. I, you could probably do something like fives and two eyes, so that your will, whichever side your your will is on, 
based on that, you know, whatever your weak side is or, you know, whatever you're not flipping the guys, whatever side it's on, then you just kick everybody down away from it and then line up in that. Um, that would be a way to do it. Potentially you could just, you, you can just do what you're doing though and slant everybody that way. All that you're really losing with the way that you're doing it is one little thing. And again, risk reward. Do you want to completely spend, invest all of this time teaching, or you just want to say, eh, if this happens, we could be in trouble. When our three tech and two I, and this is the details of the system, you're going to have to be in it to really learn it. When our three tech and two I get a pass set, they don't pass rush. They bull rush. The linebackers go screaming past them because they saw pass. They bull rush for one reason and one reason only. They are the guys that are responsible for screens and draws. Now, screen shouldn't be a problem because if that guy tries to release on a screen, he should be tackled. Draw. Only issue that you'll have. And the person responsible for the draw is when they get an in, when they get a pass set, the the three tech and the two I bull rush so that if I see draw, I can tackle it. Um, they just basically switched to going head up on that guy. So with slanting, your your nose can still do that, and he needs to be taught that. I slant strong because you're bringing the will. So I slant strong, but if he pass sets, I go back to bull rush. Um, you he just can't bull really rush do everything. That. That's what he's doing. I just taught him just bull rush everything. Blow the center and that, up. That may be fine. That Put him may be fine. on the quarterback's fine. lap, and then uh, we'll be okay. And you got a good kid there, so it's fine. That that may be a solution to it. Um, you know, that's so that's the one thing to be aware of. So with a four three, the only adjustment is obviously you know we only have two safeties, so it is generally the Sam backer that becomes the strong safety role, um, and the. The nine tech end has to move into a six eye when he gets the I'm here call when the, with the tight end on the field. Very simple. Basically, all we've done is we've turned our four three front into a four two front for the purpose of the splits. Basically, all we've done in the three four is turned our three four front into a slanting into a four two front for the purpose of the splits. The three three is a little bit dicier, um, and I don't know why. It just is. Um, you've got the same six guys under the umbrella. You can obviously very easily, and this is what I would recommend to most 3-3 three, three coaches, most 3-3 three, three coaches are going to have some sort of a 4-2 front. It goes all the way back to Georgia military and the solid front, which was their their 4-2 version. Um, they had a tough front. They had a solid front. So they had a five-man front. They had a four-man front. They had a three-man front. Um, what I would recommend is that you install. And... I've started screwing around with this more and more. You guys that want to be multiple front, what's the limitation of your front? What do you want to do with it? And I've more and more recommended to 4-2 coaches, the limitation of your front is bad blitz angles. So just install the 4-3 front for your exotic blitzes. You want to run America's Fire Zone? Line up in a 4-3, rotate your safeties, run America's Fire Zone. You can't really run it out of the 4-2. You're going to be running three under three deep, so it doesn't affect your coverages. So what I would recommend, I mean, honestly, what I would recommend, first and foremost, and I know that you have different limitations, what I would recommend first and foremost to coaches is consider that this is really designed as a 4-2 blitz. Yes, we've adapted it. Now, again, we've adapted it to the 3-4 and the 4-3 very simply to make it a 4-2 front. And it's not hard. Um, consider if you're a three-three coach, simply installing a four-two front, um, and you can slant. You can go. You can go fours and twos, and and slant. You know whatever, uh, and run your four-two front, and don't run anything else, but this blitz out of your four-two front. Then you don't have to teach anything else. You don't have to teach how to play from a shade. You don't have to teach them how to do this and how to do that and how to be a 4-2, how to be an odd front and even front. You have to teach all that. It's a line to perform. 
That's it. It's a line to perform, a line to perform. We want to run this blitz that is fantastic, and it adjusts to six-man, seven-man, eight-man pressure. It adjusts to empty. It does everything for us. It is the Swiss Army knife of defense, but like the sharp Swiss Army knife, not the crappy one, like the sharp one, like the the good Swiss Army knife, like the one that the, the red one that they sold in the knife stores in the mall uh that was in a special little box and like we all wanted as kids but then what we got was the like knockoff one from amazon we didn't get it from amazon we were kids but the knockoff (laughs) one that you got at the flea market that thing was so dull that like you could literally just sit there and saw it on your hand for a half hour and like nobody wouldn't you would there there was no noticeable indentation at the end of it this is the good this is like the hundred dollars swiss army knife are there hundred dollars swiss army knives or like hundred fifty dollars gotta be somebody's gotta make good ones this is like the one with the diamond Back then, uh, that would have been – so when I watch MASH, I just add a zero to everything. So he says $5 bet to $50 bet, right, because it was supposed to be in the 50s. And so – and that's inflation for you. So I have to assume, like, when we were kids, you, you're you not putting a zero on it, but – Probably double. Yeah. Probably double. So they're so, definitely double because I know that they were $30, $40, $50. That's uh... – there you go. So yeah, hundred dollars um, one. But I'm nice. sure there were like really because you know you could get them with like fifty tools on it. That costs more than having, you know, five the twelve things that you really need. Yeah. So, but but I mean, it legitimately is a Swiss Army knife defense. It defends everything, and it does it in a special way. Uh, and, and that's that's the encouragement I would give. I mean, like, yes. By the way, we do draw it up in the thirty three stack defensive system how to run it. But more and more, I say, um, we did this last year with our four, with our, and, and then it got off the rails. Containers, everybody, containers. You know, if you say we're going to run this front with one blitz or two blitzes, keep it that way. We said we were going to line up in a three three and run this one blitz out of it, and it's really one of the base blitzes that we run now in our three four front. But um, it got off the rails, and all of a sudden we were like, we're a three three team. It's like no, we're not. <laughs> We are base four two team. It's fun. It's fun to it jump is. into something else and go. Wait a minute. If I go right, I also need to go left, or they'll always know I'm going right. Exactly. And then if I send that guy, I also have to send the other guy because they'll always know I'm sending that guy, and he needs to go right and left. And now I'm at four blitzes, and now we're in we're through three team. Well, I'll give you the the, the offensive um, equivalent is our over package where we shift into an unbalanced single wing alignment all that we ran we we have an entire offense around it right and we've installed more we have uh so we, we shift primarily to the right the overload is to the right and then we were run our outside zone call snap direct snap run our outside zone call to the right it's an overload and most teams it was our two-point package so nobody adjusts because the kids are all arguing with each other on who blew the coverage and you know they want to get off the field. They're tired. So then you line up in this and you shift to unbalanced and they're just like, screw it, go ahead and get the two. I don't care. So it's got like an 80, 90% success rate, like way more than your, than your PAT where you can screw it up too. Um, but you know, we had outside zone. Well, then we have a counter off of that where we fake the outside zone and, and they pulls it and runs around to the left. No problem. I got all this from Rick Darlington, by the way, who runs as an entire offense. Uh, we just adapted our stuff. And then we had a power and we had a counter. Well, then we had to have an inside zone and then we had to have a pass. And then we had to do something else. 90% of the time we ran what we called six outside zone, right? And most of the time it worked. The rest of it was just a waste of time. None of the rest of it ever worked consistently. What, what's the, uh, you install stuff to take up the DC's time, right? And then all of a sudden you're yeah. taking up your own you're taking time. taking up your own time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we talked about adjustments for uh, for some other things. And uh, most of it, you say, just goes back to f- create a forefront and, and run out of it. But if not, com. Join right now. A dollar. Seven days. You can go in and look at whatever you're running. You can figure out the Tiger Cats on all of them. Um. Literally all of them, four three, four two five, three three stack, three four. Um, once again, that's a this Joe Daniel football. We're not. We never recommend that you be multi system. Now that I've seen it in uh, operation, I I do think you should have an off front, much like an off coverage. Mm-hmm. Don't know. I've got more uh, more research to do on that. Um, 
but these are all random one system anyway. So you can just keep the same lingo. You can keep the same the umbrella. I think you there. also, have to, I mean, you, you, you also take in consideration, you've been doing this for a few years. Yeah. Which, which is with multiple, even though not necessarily at the same place doing it in different bases, you have a deeper understanding. And you also do this where you sit I here do. and talk about it for a week, every, every, for an hour, two hours every week. Uh, and you've been in the chalk talk even before you were on the podcast. You were in the chalk talks, and you were like doing all that. You know, you were you were putting in all this time. Most of our coaches, when they first come in, like you said, they're buying it. They're buying it in July or August, or even if it's March. That's where we say, look, just run the four two five for a year. Run the base. You can do some base blitzes. You won't ever leave. By the way, the four two five is where it's at. Forefront, baby. Pistol power offense system is the other system that's available. Guess what? You get to look at all of those for that same $1 for seven days. Chalkboard forums, you get access. Uh, Chalk Talks bi-weekly. Excuse me, weekly now that we're in season. They are bi-weekly in the off-season. Game film analysis. That's what uh, I believe two weeks ago you heard about. Yep, it came out today. This is coming out in approximately two weeks. Guys, we were, we were, at a, we, we were almost behind on episodes, and now we've just jumped ahead. I don't even know. We just recorded some stuff. It's great. Um, so this is either two or three weeks ago. Game film analysis. Go listen to that episode. If you're wondering what it is, is it worth the money? Um, you got to go from gold to platinum to get it. Go listen to that episode. It's literally the three guys who are watching your film discussing the things that they see every time they turn on film. So you can go get you a little sneak peek of what we're probably going to say when you shoot your film in the first time. But what you don't get is that second, third, fourth trip. 